In this episode, we are going to go to Chandler's and help him clean up his yard after Hurricane Milton. We're going to put the crocodiles back in their enclosures. Get back in the water. And then we're going to see the damage the hurricane did to both my winter garden and Apopka properties. Let's take a look. Hey Chandler, how are you? I'm you good. We've come down here to help you clean the place up a little bit. I appreciate it. I really need the help. This place is trashed. We're going to pick up some of these palm fronds and we're going to release some crocodiles. Hell yeah, let's do it. The animals need to get back into their enclosures ASAP. So let's do it. Sounds good. Caesar, you have all this picked up? Picked huh? up by 3 o'clock? No, no, no. It's a lot of trash. We get this all picked up, we can go home. Yeah, well, I can only just sleep in here for maybe two or three days. I'm one-handed Tom here, so I'm limited to what I can do. First of the medium-sized crocodiles that we have to put back is gonna be the African slender snouted crocodile, critically endangered. His name is Pointy Peter, and we wanna get him out of that tube immediately so he can get that water, get refreshed and feel good. All right, time for the slender snap to go back home. Come on. There we go, beautiful. I hate to box them up and stress them out, but it's better than this animal potentially getting loose into the ecosystem's of floor. Yeah, brother. Yeah. yeah, good time. Then we're gonna put Ziggy back, my first ever crocodile that I got with my license. She's a beautiful American croc I've been raising since she was a tiny hatchling. Gotta get her back in her enclosure. Go. All right, Ziggy. Oh. I'm sorry, mama. I'm sorry. Come on, back in the water. There we go. Happy crocodile. You like it? Oh, I love it, Caesar. I don't like. Man, you don't have those in Mexico. You you gotta no, stay. No, no, no. I don't like the crocodiles. You don't like the what? The crocodiles. What do you call them? What do you, what do you say? Crocodiles. Crocodiles. That's bad. Look at this. I don't like it. I don't like snakes. I don't like it. This. It's not good for me. It's bad. And then the finale, we have to get old Nadia, the naughty Siamese crocodile, back in her exhibit. She ate a bunch of chicken before we put her into the tubes before the hurricane came and hit. So she went to the bathroom in the tubes. There's goop and poop everywhere. So we want her out of there. We want her clean. And we want these crocs back in the nice Florida sun. What's up, pretty girl? You okay? You okay? Come on. Oh, oh, come on. Get back in the water. Come on. Come on. There we go. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Beautiful. So we are going to put the large male Cuvier's dwarf caiman. We're going to put him in here where he used to be temporarily. And then we're actually gonna put his future partner, the female, with him in here and see how they do. We're gonna test this out. I'm not gonna manhandle him, I don't wanna stress him out. Because every time you stress these guys out, they go off feed for a long time. There we go, I'm just gonna... There we go. There you go, you got a little boat. You got a little boat, buddy. Come on. Come on. Come on. There you go. He's just gonna disappear. Bone bubbles, you like that? <laughs> I'm committed, I'm committed! <laughs> oh, you wanna hold that for me for a second? So this is the spicy little female Cuvier's dwarf that's gonna go with that male we just let go. Good. Alright, beautiful female, finally big enough to potentially have a boyfriend. Good luck! This is the broad snouted caiman, specifically Bridget. Uh, she's actually one of the first crocodilians I got with my license as a hatchling. She's roughly like four to five years old. And the broad snouted caiman actually comes from Argentina and Brazil. And unlike other species of caiman, like the Cuvier's dwarf or the other dwarf species, the broad snout caiman can actually get eight to nine feet long. Pretty big for a caiman. Is that around a year old? Into the Ziggy's old enclosure so they have deeper water. And we actually have the West Africa. Oh, we have the West African in here too. So there they all go. One little West African to go. Look at that super cool looking crocodile. We got Tom hanging out. Tom, we're both vlogging. We're both we're vlogging it up. Beautiful West African crocodile right there with the Americans. And now that'll promote growth because they'll have more depth of water to exercise and use their muscles, which is really good.
Because Anakin, watch out, he might jump okay. up. Anakin, my saltwater crocodile, he pooped in here. So he was upgraded in a massive enclosure, but we're gonna have to put him back in his original enclosure for now. We'll get that nice big enclosure later, but for now he's gonna be in here again, just because we wanted the Cougars Dwarf came and have a big exhibit. He is the largest species of reptile on the planet, Crocodilus porosus, that can get over 20 feet long. How gorgeous is that? Broad snout came. They can get about eight feet long, and they're from Argentina and Brazil. Very short, broad jaws as they get older. How cool. A little dinosaur looks like a little T Rex. Look at those eyes. These are my sweet little puppies right here, my American alligators. Oh, oh, Cheech. And we got Chong. They're getting too big to double fist. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Not a good idea. Let me get a better grip. Yeah, these guys were confiscated by FWC, so somebody had them, and they needed a new home. They came here as hatchlings, and now they're probably like a year to two years old, because I can tell when they're about two feet long, they're about two years old. Once they get to six feet, they start to slow down their growth rate, but every year they grow about a foot, so it's a good indicator. How cool. Chong. What are you doing, Chong? Come here, Chong. Come on, Chong. Come on. Oh, oh, oh. Relax, Chong. Relax. Relax. Say hello to Chong. Say hello to Tom Holt, Chom, Cheech, <laughs> Chong, which, whichever one, Cheech, Cheech, say hello to Tom. Tom, say hello. Hello. So uh, we have two different species of dwarf caiman in the world, and we actually have both species right here. So right there, that's a smooth-fronted caiman, or a smooth-fronted dwarf caiman, also known as the Schneider's caiman, also known as Paleosuchus trigonatus, which is the taxonomy, the scientific name. Uh, the whole point of the scientific name is to know the exact animal, uh, exactly what you're looking at, because the common names or English names, they always get misconstrued, and there are lots of different common names. So scientific name tells you exactly what you're looking at. This right here is the smooth-fronted caiman. The biggest they get is just over six feet. And then over here, we have the Cuvier's dwarf caiman, which is actually the smallest crocodilian in the world. The Cuvier's dwarf caiman is actually the smallest crocodilian of all the different 28 species. So the Cuvier's dwarf caiman, the max they'll get is just over five feet, which is rare. That's a huge individual. Typically, they're like around four feet long. So this is the smallest crocodilian of every species on the planet. Really dark right now. The most heavily armored crocodilian of all different species. Covered in bony osteoderms. Covered in those bony osteoderms. Look at that. That is a dinosaur. How cool is that, Tom? That's super cool. We're going to put them right back. So these guys have been doing good. They get along with each other. And eventually we'll get the smooth front came in the opposite sex so he can be with his own group. And uh, I think the facility is actually trying to get... Oh! All right, so here's Layla, my American crocodile, named after a cat that I passed away. I used to own when I was a kid. Come on, Layla. Come on, Layla. Time to feel good again. There we go, mama. Beautiful. Beautiful Bobby, the American crocodile, male, getting bigger and bigger. Come on, buddy. Straight back in the water. Beautiful boy. Sure. All right, and this is my beautiful Cuban crocodile, Guapo, who likes to jump. Uh-oh, there we go. Beautiful, watch out, watch out, guys, watch out, watch out. <laughs> They're jumpers. Beautiful Cuban crocodile, Guapo. Last of all the crocodilians that I had to put back, so now, I guess I can clean my house and breathe. <laughs> Secure. Well, thank you. Thank you for everything. I really appreciate well, it. Appreciate it too. Take care. See you next time. You guys may not know this, but Chandler and I are neighbors. We both live in Fort Pierce, Florida. I have a weekend vacation home in Fort Pierce. And once again, I built a palm garden on it. It sits on the intercoastal, it's two and a half acres. I planted everything on the property. It has a lot of coconut palms in the front yard, and I got a whole bunch of royal palms in the backyard. This right here is a tahini palm, a very rare palm that there's not many outside of botanical gardens. The garden has about 200 palm trees, about 75 varieties. Um, everything in this garden is tropical. A cool thing about Florida is if there are coconut palms, you're almost guaranteed to be frost free because everyone would plant a coconut palm if they could plant a coconut palm. These here are tropical stilt palms. And this is Barassus Ethiopium. 
It's a palm tree with a black stem, which is kind of rare. And when they get larger, they are absolutely fantastic. And this here is my triangle palm trail. I made a trail and I lined the whole thing with these weird looking triangle palms. I also have fallen in love with Cuban palms. This is the Copernici Falens. It is a blue fan palm from Cuba. And this is the Petticoat Palm, another palm from Cuba. Maybe someday I can get together with Chandler and we can put some reptiles on this property. And that is a quick overview of my Fort Pierce garden. Now, unfortunately, we got to take a look at some of the damage that was done in my Orlando gardens. This is my winter garden house um, down by Disney. And we have quite a bit of flooding from the lake. The water came up about two feet, maybe 20, 30 feet from getting into the house. As you can see here, this was my, this is my dream garden. So I want the view of the garden to be equal to the view of the lake. And um, last time this happened, it never quite got this deep. But last time it happened, it took until February for the water to go down. This is new here, unfortunately. This, is my, this here is my screened in porch. It's only a couple years old and we lost the whole thing. No one got hurt, so I guess that's the important thing and it's only money. So we have to rebuild this. Hopefully all the palm trees will live in the garden. Well, maybe one advantage is if you like wildlife, a lot of birds, a lot of fish, a lot of frogs, all within 50 feet of the back of my house. The water is like two inches deep and it's all filled with minnows. A lot of wildlife in this pond, a lot of good fishing in this pond. I'm just talking to my neighbor Jeff in 20, 30 years. The water's never been deep like this before. I thought there was a lot of fish out there. There's many more fish in here. This is where it all started. I came here, planted everything here. This was just a field. Now I'm hoping most stuff doesn't die. In fact, you can see up here, there's a little bit higher ground. These big palm trees, you can't replace that. I don't know. If you have enough money, I guess you can replace it. But hopefully it won't be that bad. You can see the water's already come down. So you can see right here, this is where the water was. And like my friend Jeff said, he said it's already come down two inches, maybe three inches. I meant for this to be a driveway and not a jungle cruise. It is a very unique piece of property. It is about five acres, a thousand feet on the lake, just three miles to the entrance of Disney, and you can't see a single neighbor from the house. So I love this piece of property. It just, I just gotta learn how to live with the flooding. There's my lake. And here is the entrance to my property. And this is my driveway. You guys want to see something funny? Well, I lost a few palm trees in the yard. And look, my 40 foot Washingtonia palm lands on my gazebo. But you know, maybe it'll be a blessing in disguise. It may keep the head of the palm out of the water. And when the water goes down in February or March, I can replant and maybe it'll still be alive. It seems I lost everything from the north to the south. I still had the tree, the tree straps on here from two years ago. And once again, I hope I could read, I could stand that back up. Here's another palm tree that's down. I feel it's a little bit of a rich man's hobby, having all these exotic gardens in a hurricane zone. Don't know if I'm gonna bring new palm trees in here or just try to um, recover the ones that are damaged. So I just wanna show you something you see in this copper leaf. 
how it almost looks like it's wilted, like it's not getting enough water. But what it, it is, is it's, it's 12 inches underwater and all the roots are being suffocated. And then once the roots die, the plant cannot take up moisture. So when you overwater something, you kill it. Just like if you underwater something, you could kill it. Well, this was the damage that Hurricane Milton did to my winter garden property. Now let's go take a look at the nursery property in Apopka. Here I am at the southern end of my garden. It's the lowest part of my garden. It's by my 350 foot pond and there's zero damage here. As you can see with the giant alocasia, that's Borneo giant, the largest alocasia on this property. And, but if you look around here, there's very, very little damage. Unfortunately, there's no saving this palm tree. This palm tree snapped in half. I had two or three here in Apopka snap in half. I had two or three in Winter Garden snap in half. Then I had maybe another 10 palm trees blow over. But I'm hoping when Jim and Corey comes back at the end of the week, we can just stand those back up. And other than that, we've had very little damage here other than I completely lost one of my greenhouses. One of my greenhouses got destroyed. We lost about six greenhouse covers and we had a couple of humongous washouts that um, we'll show you that as well. So all those tubs you see in the water are my water lily pots. During the storm, my water lilies got flipped upside down and the tubs blown all over to the west side of the pond. My water lily garden is very discouraging. This may be the worst my water lilies have ever looked. And in January, I am hosting the Aquascapes Winter Retreat. I don't know if I dare go into the water with my broken arm and try to fix the lilies, because I really don't have any employee that walks in the water except for me. I really lucked out, everybody. Um, this garden, like I said, it, it needs to be cleaned a little bit, but it's in pretty good shape here. Unlike this section right here, the next section I'm gonna bring you to is completely destroyed. As you can see, everybody, this section of the garden did not do as well. Fortunately, there's not a lot of expensive palm trees here. These are all my Saba bananas, and everything broke this way, which means that the wind came out of the north. And hopefully, they're all gonna have new shoots that are gonna come from the base again. And I think these were 20 feet tall, so it may take two years to get a full 20 feet tall. But look, this place has been nuked. Look at these alocasias. Look at the alocasia leaf. My alocasias, my tree fern may die. But overall, guys, I still am grateful. You know, like I said, a lot of this stuff will grow back. Now here, interest, these are dwarf Cavendish bananas, and you can see everything fell down to the west. So, I must have had severe winds from the north and I must have had severe winds from the west. This here is our collapsed greenhouse. I guess I'm fortunate. I have 72 greenhouse structures and now I only have 71. For well, these pieces you buy, maybe they're no good. I need to look for another different and to make it the house. I need to make it different job, more better. Well, it's terrible that a greenhouse structure collapsed, but as you can see, I have a lot of my nursery that looks just fine. Well, I live for 32 years, and I only experienced for two hurricanes in here in Apopka. It does the bad. So how many hurricanes were worse than this hurricane? In here? In Apopka or? Yeah. There's two. There's two hurricanes passing here, and the knee is still here in, in Apopka. Someone says, I don't know why you're planting in October during hurricane season. And in my experience, I do get a tropical storm. So Caesar said two hurricanes in 30 something years. But I would say we get a tropical storm about once every four years, once every five years. And our, our season is August, September, October is our hurricane season. So. We were planting in October, so I think there was a 1 in 15 chance that we were going to get hit. 
So once again, you may say, why do you plant then if there's a one in 15 chance of getting hit? Two reasons. One reason is plants are cheapest in the fall. Um, you saw earlier, we went to the landscape show, Kenan and I, and there's deals on plants. So you can get plants cheaper in, in the fall than you can in the spring. And also too, unfortunately, Caesar will be leaving us in a month, and I did want to get this planted before Caesar left. You come in here. Okay. What do you want? You, you, you hold it for the pie. Okay. You come in and slow down over there. What? Give me, give me your head, good head. Who's going down, me or you? It's you. <laughs> what do you want me to go for the bottle? No, because I want to get a picture to show how deep the hole is. Uh, here. I got it. All right. Okay. Uh, so, look at that, everybody. We have these washouts. I'm sure you see on the news, you have the washouts, entire roads get washed out. And this is the biggest hole we've ever seen at this nursery. <laughs> wow. You gonna be able to get that palm tree out of there, Caesar? Yeah, I'll do it. Yeah. Okay. All right. You want some help getting out? No, I got it. Caesar, that wasn't dangerous. You told me it was dangerous to go down there. No, for you. Okay. For you, it's dangerous. Okay. We will see you next week, and don't forget to like and subscribe.